Hey, Stevie Nunn here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Berniston Auto Wrecking in Berniston, Mass. And this is the second of a two-part video called the Torsion Bar Tanker. In the last video, we showed how this 1962 Chevy C60 oil delivery truck has torsion bar front suspension, which is something that Chevrolet trucks from the C10 all the way to the 9,000 GBW pound C80 had. Check that out. 1963, that went away in favor of beam axles and leaf springs. Trouble with that was it gave you a good ride, but it also went out of alignment real easy. And trucking companies hate wearing out tires. So that was gone by 63, but here it is on this truck. Now the door is marked C.M. Dean, Berniston, Mass. So C.M. Dean must have been the owner of this oil delivery company. Now, you gotta remember that up till about 1860 or so, oil in this country basically was whale oil. It was used for lubrication, for lighting, but in about the 1860s, 1870s, in Pennsylvania and California, we discovered dinosaur oil in the ground, mineral-based oil. And by uh, 1900, you know, oil was rivaling coal in heating homes. And by 1910, Standard Oil in California started using trucks to deliver oil, replacing horses. So by 1962, the, uh, the science of uh, delivering oil was, was well ironed out in trucks like this. Now, this truck has a gas tank inside of the cab, which is a little funky. Again, this is a 261 cubic inch in line six and speaking of tanks look at this again we see the cm dean logo kind of burned into the side but this is a great example of how home heating oil was delivered to people's houses until the mid 1970s when steel construction gave way to aluminum construction uh, the trouble with steel of course is in a rollover or a crash this stuff makes sparks you get a fire aluminum is far less likely to create sparks in fact it doesn't create sparks but you, if you want climb up on top over there shane and let's look inside of this tanker here now tanker vehicles of course we know they they travel with heavy loads of liquid inside which is prone to surging so that's why this is divided into two tanks in fact that also gives uh, the operator the ability to have two different grades of home heating oil or whatever kind of liquids but inside of these here. Now this hatch we see here, it says uh, it's cast iron. It's almost like a submarine hatch, but it says Philadelphia Valve Company right there, this cast iron lid. And uh, there's some viewpoints or viewports, I think right here and vents. So let's lift it up. Uh, okay. Hello. Hello. I like that echo. But if you look inside, you'll see those V-shaped forms right there. Those are baffles to prevent the oil from surging. When the truck accelerates or goes up a hill, instead of all that oil rushing to the back and maybe causing a wheel stand, that V-shaped uh, structure inside, which is welded in place permanently, uh, diverts the oil left and right and breaks up that momentum. So again, the science of these things is more than meets the eye. And speaking of that, this raised area here around the, uh, the filler uh, openings is here so that in the event this thing goes upside down, the uh, tops of these things don't get scrubbed off as this thing rolls down the road. So these are a safety thing that was mandated. Again, these walls, they're pretty rugged stuff. But again, this is a steel tanker. And these were the rule um, starting around 1910. Before that, wood was used with you know, horse-drawn trailers. But again, the steel was uh, phased out in the mid-70s in favor of aluminum, which is more expensive and lighter, um, but doesn't spark and cause fires. And especially with gasoline delivery, aluminum is mandatory. Uh, but again, here at the back, it's kind of cool. What we have is the flow meter. Now these right here are handles with cables. You pull them up like that and these actually run underneath the, the tank and open gravity fed valves which then flow the oil into this device right here. So as the oil makes its way through, this reads the amount of flow. So you know how many gallons you've sold to Mrs. O'Malley or to Mr. Um, Hendricks or whatever it might be. But again, it's cool to see this is the original uh, structure here. Now, uh, in the back, that six volt battery, we can see it's a six volt, it's got three vents versus uh, uh, six on a 12 volt, but that runs this electric motor right here. And what does that do? Well, it operates this hose. This is the deliver, delivery hose right here, which you would, uh, you know, retract or reel out in order to fill oil into the home heating tank of a house. And this is the nozzle right here, which feeds down into the receiver on the home heating tank. Usually a 250 gallon thing. I've got two of these in my cellar, uh, the tanks, and uh, they're about a thousand bucks a piece to fill now that we're at war in Russia, etc. But with that said, uh, this nozzle is made by a company that says Scully Nozzle. And in fact, the Scully Nozzle company is located, the headquarters in Wilmington, Massachusetts. In fact, 
fact, uh, Scully is one of the leaders in uh, dispensing nozzles. And in fact, they have headquarters, uh, in, again, in Wilmington, Mass., but they have outlets in uh, Great Britain, uh, Asia, and uh, a national corporation located right here in Mass. Now, here's the thing. If that battery goes dead, what do you do? Well, you got the old-fashioned handle right here. You put this puppy, there's a, there's a little slot, and you put this onto that, and you got the manual override. So it's, uh, you're all set either way on uh, delivering the oil, you know, like, like the uh, post office, come rain or snow or sleet or fire, whatever. You gotta deliver the oil because people don't like being cold. I don't, I know that for sure. Now around the side here, again, we see the uh, C.M. Dean logo burnt out and you have to imagine that C.M. Dean, he may, they may even still be around. It says Berniston, Massachusetts on the door. So we're in Berniston now. So a local company, uh, they may or may not still be around. I don't know. But anyway, this uh, again, 62 C60 truck, Chevy with a dual tire, single rear axle. And this is a good example here of a full floating axle. You might say, what's wrong with that thing? Well, there's an axle shaft, which is a T head, which is spline, which fits in here as a cap. Take that out. It's called a full floating axle. What that means is there are bearings on the outside and the inside and the axle itself, the axle shaft, the drive axle floats and can be removed without the wheel coming off of the truck. So again, uh, whether that was taken out to access the, the rear axle or maybe to roll it more easily, don't know. But there it is right there, full floating. In fact, Ford and Chevy and Dodge F250 and you know three quarter ton trucks have full floating axles in uh, three quarter scale. This is a pretty big one right here, but as big you know, 18 wheelers go and stuff, this is pretty small. They can be really big, but that's a full floater right there. So here we have it right here, the uh, end of the line for C.M. Dean's 1962 torsion bar equipped uh, home heating oil delivery uh, tanker truck. And if you haven't seen the first video in this two part series, do check it out because the truck that's carrying this uh, tanker body is very cool. It's a 62 Chevy C60 torsion bar front suspension truck, uh, only made for a few years, uh, replaced by the leaf springs. The torsion bar, the idea was they were lighter, gave a better ride, but they were easily knocked out of alignment. They started eating tires and truckers like C.M. Dean didn't like buying tires on the front of their rigs or the back of their rigs. So again, check out the first of this two-part video series if you want to see that one. And if you want to see more of these videos, well, subscribe to the Steve Mags YouTube channel.